what actually happens when we die? What happens in near-death experiences? That's a big one to take on, but we're going to try it today. Hi, everybody. I am Michelle. This is Angel Souls. If you're not familiar with my work, I am an angelic medium, so I work with angels and archangels, fifth dimensional frequencies and above, and I try to do my best to bring all that energy in and give you messages. So we're posing this question. Oh, yes. This question to the angels. Bear with me here. Let's see. This is not scripted, so we're just going to kind of go with it here and see what they say. They're going to start with the near-death experiences. Explain the exit points. Okay, so they're asking me to go back over exit points on a soul's contract. The soul's contract... Remember, I'm a human trying to interpret this, so this is our human way of seeing this. There are the, and I've said this for years, there are high points on a soul contract. And it's the idea of, okay, when I go into this incarnation, in this specific uh, physical body, in this story, I want to try to learn what it is to overcome romantic woes. You might not even phrase it that way necessarily when you're in your expanded consciousness. It'll be more of what happens with the process of the heart. You know, when the heart just starts to fall in love and then is in love. And then what if that doesn't work out? How does the heart heal itself? It's exploring all of that. And so there needs to be a storyline in order to explore it. So those high points are described as such. We can have soul contract agreements with other souls but that does not mean they're going to do it because here's the wild thing once we get into these density consciousness bodies we have spiritual amnesia right and that's part of it because how easy would it be if you just were in your expanded awareness all the time like there would be no challenge here right there'd be nothing to learn you wouldn't be fully in the experience is what they're saying you wouldn't be fully there um it's the they're likening it to like a child learning to color right in the moment you know they got to learn how to do all this well as an adult you know how to color presumably <laughs> uh but <laughs> so you know we need to come in with those kinds of things but it's not necessarily defined and this is where the angels have come in and said the word destiny the way humans use it can be problematic because it's sort of escapism an excuse it's my destiny to be this it's my destiny to be with this person it's my destiny it's not it's not now you had a goal right? and there was some energy set up for you to be able to do it but how it actually looks that is a free will choice and that is what gets manifested as you're going through your story i've used the example before about uh, everybody, and I'm not even a sports fan, I don't know where this came from, but <laughs> if you want to imagine that we're on a field and everyone's on the field and they all have their own playbook that they're trying, so we're having to move around everybody else's free will choices and you might still get tackled, okay? Someone's free will choice, they said, I'm going to tackle this person and there you go, right? If you want to see the angels as being the coaches, and trying to trying to help you along because they can see things from the sidelines. They they have a different viewpoint than you do being within it. So they're trying to help you, but they're not going to jump in. That's my little niece in the background. I don't know if you can hear. But they're not going to jump in and play the game for you. Does that make sense? So as far as exit points go, a lot of humans choose to have three outs. Is that a baseball reference? I didn't make the rules. Okay, I didn't. I, sorry. Now, that will vary from person to person. It depends on your soul's path and what your soul is doing. But generally speaking, there can be three moments. And they don't have to be physical exits. I'm right here with you. If you're like, what the heck are we talking about? I know. This, this is part of being a medium. I don't have all the answers. I'm just, I'm just sitting here. I'm just being a conduit, okay? <laughs> so we have these three exits. And more often than not, these are points in people's lives where they reinvent themselves. Okay, so it can be an ego death where the old way of you, that's a, that's a spiritual, well, let's say you go through a spiritual practice and usually that's what triggers that sort of transformation. But let's say you're not doing it that way. Like one of the 
exit points could be, okay, I've learned, I've learned, I've learned, I've dragged this lesson on for too long, I'm going to reinvent myself, right? For others, this can be a near-death experience, and the soul can choose to leave at that point. Often what happens, they're saying, with a near-death experience, it's highly, widely reported that people will come out of their body, and there is an assessment that goes on. Now, their consciousness is still kind of there, you know what I'm saying? So they might say, a little bit of the, I don't want to say that they're taking their ego with you, but they're still kind of being veiled by ego energy, right? And so they go, hey, this feels really good. That body's all broken. I don't want to go back to that thing. You know, I'm going to go on towards this love, this peace. And a lot of times you hear people, you know, say that, Maybe a loved one appeared or they were talking to God or they were talking to angels who said, you have to go back. You have to go back. Now, were they really talking to God? Maybe. Were they really talking to angels? Maybe. Their loved ones? Sure. Why, why not? But they're going to talk to the being that they need in order to do the next right thing. So if someone is like, nah, I'm not listening to Aunt Betty, uh, they're going to keep going. Angels, mm, okay, I never really believed in angels. They're going to go right past that. So maybe if they feel like they're in the presence of God and God says, go back, they'll listen to that, right? So again, it's very personal. It's per person and their ego experience, their timeline experience. Is, there's a lot of things that go into this. So in that near-death experience, uh, when they are being asked to go back or they know they have to go back, that is them bypassing an exit point on their soul's contract. Then, of course, there will be the final um, exit, which is only exiting the story. They're always saying that this is a transformation, and the transformation has to do with coming out of heaviness, coming out of density consciousness. And so there is, they're saying the process of acclimation, of because the ego is so good at protecting us that they're saying it stays attached in that process so then if someone let's say is very like something i don't want to get too gruesome here obviously but let's say something happened very abruptly and maybe it was a huge injustice and that's how they got kicked out um they're saying save that for another time okay so i don't want to bombard everybody who's watching this with that sort of example if you want to hear that example remind me of what it was in the comment section and we'll come back to it but they could stay attached to their third dimensional ego consciousness uh, existence, right? Or, or we hear often, and I kind of touched on this a little bit in the, you know, do our loved ones become angels video. They might, a soul can stay close to their family for sure. Uh, they can come and still be around you, still be watching out for you, but they are not your spirit guides and they're not angels, no, they're not. They are your loved one in spirit form, in their pure form. But even if they're like right here where you can feel them, they're hanging out and helping you. They're staying close to 3D. They're not going on, right? They're not going in. It's not like they're like a lost soul or anything like that. But they're not going into upper fourth dimensional energy, which would be a spirit guide or fifth dimensional energy. Some people argue that because there's... There's a big thing here with spirituality of the fifth dimensional self and bringing that in. There are souls that are incarnated right now that will kick right into fifth dimensional energy. They'll return right back to it. That's not most people though. Okay, so they're making that distinction. So again, that gets into a whole big conversation. But if you knew somebody in the physical, they would not have had time to go through the whole spirit guide schooling I don't know what to call it but <laughs> that whole process to turn around and be your spirit guide within this realm so it's fine to say because people get so mad and it's the grief talking it's the grief talking they get so mad and say no my loved one's still near me yeah they are but quit calling them spirit guides they're not okay like I, I use this example all the time aunt betty boo boo She's everyone's auntie now, okay? And she's got a blueberry pie recipe. I don't know where I made that up, but there you go. We're going to stick with it. She knows only what she still knew here. The only thing that she knows more than what she knew here is what happens when you die. And as I've said in previous videos, 
that is the ultimate question to us right so because she knows that we think she's all knowing no she's not okay aunt betty is still she's still maybe mad about something okay she can, she could be <laughs> throwing something across the room i don't know okay again it's a big discussion here but what happens when there's a near-death experience there is pulling out and a reevaluation, looking at the exit point and usually with some what they're doing is they're consulting they're kicking out and they're consulting with their spirit team okay and deciding is this the time to go back or do i move on and then obviously with people with near-death experiences they didn't die so they come back in so there is that the process of dying itself so people who they're saying that people who've had near-death experiences they're experiencing a granule of it a tiny tiny piece of it one of the things i wanted to know i'm going to give a trigger warning here um if people feel pain if that's too much for you that's okay i, I send you my love please receive it <laughs> please receive the love if you want to cut the video off here but I'm going to go into that question. And their answer to that is, and it's a sad one, only if the person won't let go. Only if the person, okay, so they're giving me this moment. Like, let's say the exit point's here. It's the exit. It's the real exit, okay? And someone is terrified of it they're going to, the way they're showing me, they're going to run tighter into their brain, into the ego. And they're not going to allow a release. So the more they hang on to the physical, the more they're going to feel. They're talking about some people who go into a coma where the ego is dreaming but the spirit is wandering. The spirit is wandering. And that's interesting. <laughs> I know somebody who is in a coma. Hi, I'm, I'm so glad you're here with us. Um, actually, I've had a few clients come in who have described being in a coma and they were dreaming the whole time. Um, and every person's different. They might have been aware that they were exploring too. But pain is felt when there's fear. And when someone wants to hang on, when someone, especially they're giving me the example of like parents, you know, they don't want to leave their children. I don't want to sit here and say that suffering is a choice because some of us, you know, we're responding to what's happening. And they're just dotting around all these examples here. Um, of times when people would hang on so if they hang on yes they're experiencing pain but again and i know you've heard this before god never gives us more than we can handle and you can roll your eyes at that you can do one i don't because you had a religion one time and you didn't like him and you're so bitter um <laughs> okay like listen i'm like i'm just gonna lay down for you you do whatever you want with that but but we aren't given more than what we can handle and especially when it comes to pain. They are reassuring us and saying the body does have a numbing system. A way to try to shut that down. The body may come off center, or excuse me, the um, soul may come off center a little bit when there's too much pain going on in the body. But if someone is ready, even if there's still a little bit of fear, because there's always going to be a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking like people who are like, no, I'm staying. <laughs> like, I'm going to claw at the wall. Like, you're not taking me, Reaper. You know, like, I'm not, <laughs> well, stick in there. That was my grandfather. That dude, he had so many near-death experiences. He lived to be in his mid-80s and finally went very peacefully, you know, surrounded by people who were caring about him. So, you know, if someone's ready, this is the process and they're saying this is actually a beautiful transformation because someone will be they're saying soaked in the light <laughs> i love how they put things they're soaked in the light now there is talk of dmt this chemical reaction that happens in your brain a lot of people who are afraid to believe or afraid to open their minds 
um, they will try to stomp all over that. They're afraid to believe it, so they want you to be afraid as well. Overlook those people. Let them be where they are. It's fine. They're serving a purpose, but they don't need to influence more knowledge. Okay? They don't, they don't get to shut that down. So that flash of light is the release. Uh, this gets pretty spooky um, because there are some people who do certain acts. Yes, I'm speaking this way very intentionally because they want to see someone else's DMT moment because they can experience it. They can get that energy. It's horrible. It's a horrible way. That we That's just awful. But that that's just a flash of a moment for the release. Okay. And then they're saying the angels, your guides, everyone is always there to welcome you. It's like you walk through a door. So your loved ones are there. Yes, you get reunited with your loved ones, even if they're off doing whatever. Okay. Some of them reincarnate. Uh, but again, it gets into this complicated um, discussion about the construct of the soul, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's a whole other video. <laughs> right? But your soul's having a lot of different experiences all at once. And they can send a, a version of themselves. So really, it's not the full person that's there. It's just the version you remember from the story that they, the, the part of the story that they interacted with. That's the part that will show up. So that's how people can uh, recognize. I mean, do you really think you look like this? You don't look like this. You look like a lot of different things, okay? <laughs> but grandma may show up looking like grandma. Does that make sense? To welcome you in because you feel if it's someone that you love and you feel comforted and you've always wanted to be reunited with them, uh, they'll show up to help you feel at ease and to acclimate to that transformational process. Okay. But grandma ain't just grandma. <laughs> grandma, that part of her soul is showing up uh, as the character that she once played right? for the reunion. So you can see it as like a TV show reunion where everybody comes back in, they step back into their roles and they're, you know, coming in just for good, good old time's sake, <laughs> that sort of thing. But the more important process and where the angels get involved, even if people don't perceive their angels, because sometimes, again, sometimes people who've had the near death experiences, they don't get that far. They don't get so far as to see their angels. When I cross over or when I have a near death experience, a big part of my life's mission has been to um, sort of be an ambassador for angelic energy. So <laughs> I will get to um, be greeted by them because I've, I've allowed them in close. So again, it varies from person to person. But what they want everyone to know is that the whole the whole gang shows up for you and they're they've got a great sense of humor the angels have a great sense of humor than they like that i just put it in the way of like it's a, like a television show reunion where everybody comes back in we have a rap party type thing and then your soul will go through a review process with archangel jeremiah or with his angels and this is where people say, you know, I'm at the pearly gates, I'm at this, I'm at that. But they're really, they're saying it's more of a, an observation. Okay, how did that storyline go? I used to be involved in theater and we would always do a script run on the stage. No costumes, nothing like that. But if it was a script in development, we would step into the roles as it is written and do like a rough go through. The writer, the director would be sitting in the audience. The writer might go, I don't like that. Now that I see it out, no, that doesn't work. We got to rewrite that. And they go back and do some revisions. You're given a new script. And then, you know, they decide whether that's how they want it to go or not. Same kind of thing with your life review. Okay. You went through all this and you might go, mm, I, I really avoided that lesson about love and learning to um, connect with someone or I really, a lot of people who take a very shallow approach to love, they'll have to do that again. Yeah, because that I can tell you. I mean, the ultimate thing is to learn how to love unconditionally, not just in a romantic sense, but in all sense. So if you have pure love, your heart goes to, in, in a healthy way, right? <laughs> goes out to people, you're empathetic, you know then you'll probably have a good chance of moving on to another lesson. But think about anybody who's a cluster B personality. No, no, you're going to come back. So leave your questions down below. Again, this is such a huge topic. 
if you feel like something didn't get fully answered, if I didn't go deep enough, that's okay. I'm treating all these initial videos as a jumping off point. All right. So leave those questions down below. Please be clear in your questions. That way I can answer it. All right. So we're going to leave it there. I am sending you all so much love. Please receive it and take care.